Well, boy, do we have a great show for you today. Kind of a hodgepodge of things, Stuart, starting out with what fabulous finds I brought home from the thrift store and what Leah brought home from the thrift store. And I think, Stuart, you had a couple of other treasures. No, you got a couple of treasures, too, so we're going to reveal that. I'm also going to do kind of a deep dive into some of the Southern Living plants that I selected for the backyard, focusing on those that really do well in tight spaces um, and also plants that give me kind of a cozy vibe going into fall and into winter. So we're going to do some plant profiles on that. Um, of course, if you have not already done so, please order my garden journal. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Um, hit the like button, share this content with some other people. Um, as we shared some of our content, Stuart, yesterday with a great group group of students from Heritage Hall. It was fun having them over here. We talked, they're in a part of a biology class. We talked about seeds and some other things. And then I think we've just got a couple of other little special surprises for you in today's Garden Life Show. What do you say, Stuart? Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, oh my goodness, we found so much good stuff. And in fact, I don't think we even skimmed the surface of what there was to find. So I'm sure there'll be another thrifting video pretty soon in our, in our future. We were attempting to do a couple of things, find a lot of stuff to style Leah's new apartment. So that was probably our, our primary focus. I was also looking for some snack slash dessert slash appetizer plates. Um, I was looking looking as always for vessels, for flowers, for anything that kind of evokes my signature colors for fall. So as I'm phasing out my September blue, in comes this beautiful October caramel. So I was looking for things in that color palette along with the stuff that we always look for when we go to the thrift store and we are putting together a special downloadable printable sheet that at least um, from our perspective itemizes those things that we look for every single time we go. Now it may seem like that would just be obvious to us and intuitive as soon as we walk into the store, but it's not. Sometimes I forget that what I really want to look for are these staple things that will always be good items for me to have in the house to gift to others or just things that I, I find are better when they have already been pre-loved. So we're going to do that. It's something that you might want to take with you next time you go thrifting. I know that I will, so we'll be working on that. Okay, but <laughs> what you really want to know is what came home with me. Okay, it's so funny to me that you can be on a shopping expedition like this and it's the very last thing that you find that turns out to be your very favorite thing. That, oh, you're walking out the door and you're getting ready to leave and you spot something. So, drum roll, please. <laughs> okay, my absolutely favorite thing that I found at the thrift store was this homemade, and I'm not even sure what it was. If it was a runner, you can see that it looks like it's been hand sewn. I'm not really sure. I, 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 I just don't know. But the fabric is kind of a suede. And then it's got this wonderful embroidered, uh, these wonderful embroidered flowers and flora on it that are in my two colors, my September blue and my, my October caramel. More importantly, look at how great it looks with this couch, Stuart. So there were a couple of different places I could put it. I thought about putting it here. I thought about putting it on the banquette. I thought about, well, I just thought about a bunch of different things. But when I got it home and I saw how beautiful it looked with this couch, I decided on what my original impression and intent was when I saw it, and that is to make a 12 by 36 
lumbar pillow for across oh, the back good. of this couch. Won't that be great? So Stuart's mom, Susu, is going to help me with this. I found online a feather insert that will be perfect. That is exactly uh, 12 inches by 36 inches. It will be easy to do. And this cost all of $439. And the inspiration came for three for free just because I saw it. So this was my number one score. Please tell me if you guys like it. And this is my question of the day. Um, how would you use it? And specifically, if you were decorating my cottage with it, how would you use it in my cottage? Because I think um, I think that's fun. But I also like the fact that the the fabric of it seems autumnal. It's cozy. It's a warm and cozy fabric. Stuart agrees. Hey guys, Linda Vodder here. It is very windy today, but it's not so windy that I can't finish planting up the window boxes I showed you yesterday on Four Year Garden. This time, I'm going to plant them with two different small shrubs in one gallon sizes. In this one, this one consists of these darling lemon lime mandinas from the Southern Living Plant Collection. I love the color contrast with the darkness of the window box. It's soft, it's fluffy, and it will have great four season interest and then you guys know I am just a boxwood addict look at this cute little hedge that I made with four one gallon baby gems again from Southern Living it looks classic it looks elegant it will be especially beautiful in the winter time and so easy if I want them to look more seasonal I can always put some kind of smaller pot of blooming bulbs or annuals well, that was then, and this is now. I've got my work cut out for me. So I have two concrete pots that are long and narrow, not unlike those that were in the previous video. And I think, um, well, starting out, the foxglove that's in here and this boxwood topiary are going to be transplanted elsewhere. The foxglove is gonna go into the flower beds and the topiary will go into a singular pot. And then I think I'm going to do something similar here and here's a question for you you guys probably are familiar enough with the southern living plant collection should i fill this with flirt nandina with some boxwood with um well you tell me what should i fill this with i'm wanting to be it to be small shrubs so that i can leave it in the back area as just kind of a fixture so that was then, this is now. Okay, this one, I really, I really question, but Stu, uh, Leah has such a good eye for clothing and she brought a couple of pieces that she put in the basket and we just decided it was a thrift store risk worth taking. I tried it on this morning and I have to say, I could not believe and hubs approved, I couldn't believe how great it looked. Never been worn, original tags were still on it. And this is this fabulous knit dress. I mean, look at this kind of Spanish leaves. It's got kind of a Spanish motif, I think, with leaves and things on it, flowers. I love it. Is that blue? It's black. black. Oh, it is cool. black. And it's got this kind of mock necked collar. It is, believe it or not, it was pretty figure flattering. And I can see myself wearing this around the holidays or for any fancy dinners I might have to go to. We went to a really fun, fancy um, event on Thursday. That was so fun. And so yes, for all of $12.99. Looks like a sock. Looks, you think it looks like a sock? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, not in a bad way. I just think yeah, like it's yeah, form-fitting. It yeah, looks like it's going to yeah. fit like a sock. And, and, again, uh, and again, this had never been worn. The original tags are still on it. The original tag's still on it. Never <laughs> been worn. Okay, so I think that was a score. Hey guys, Linda Vodder here. A while back I showed you how I topiaried a holly that had just volunteered itself in my garden. And I recently did the same with a Blue Point Juniper that just a couple of weeks ago was in a conical shape. It just showed up and I decided to take advantage of its form. I know sometimes when I show you my topiaries, the backdrop is so green and lush, it's kind of difficult to get the profile of the plant itself. So I thought this might help. 
you can kind of see it this is a double poodle standard a smaller sphere on top with a larger sphere on the bottom and hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of the form itself when you're here in person it's much easier to detect the strong form that it's adopted but it's difficult on instagram so hopefully well, that was then, and this is now. So that was a Blue Point Juniper that was growing in the ground at my previous home, and it is still there. But I have some starts that I've showed you before that are growing up. This is one of them. It is just a ball on a stem, which is ultimately the shape that the one at the previous home assumed. I've got another one here that is more um, in a classic Christmas tree shape. And I think I'm going to leave this one the way it is. I'm running into the same problem here that I had over there. It's hard to tell the form without a good strong backdrop. But this one I think I'm going to keep in the shape because I'm gonna use it for a little Christmas tree over the holidays. And I might do the same with that ball on stem. That said, I might also put it in the ground ultimately. So that was then, and these are my blue point junipers now. Kind of a risk worth taking because I didn't it's try good. it on until I brought it home. Oh. Now, speaking of clothing, okay, let me come over here, Stuart, and model these great, never been worn before, J. Crew, just kind of cotton, 100% cotton pants. Why I love them, they have pockets. Leah knows this about me. She's the one that discovered them. I think they'll be really cute with some of my chunky high C or Mary boots. Um, it's still gonna get up to 94 today, so it's still short sleeves and they're lightweight, so it's great for these high temperatures. I think they'll be really, really cute in the summertime, just with a little sleeveless tee or something like that. But also, obviously, they'll be great in the fall with a sweatshirt, maybe that La Lulu sweatshirt that I bought recently. Okay, here's another fun find, and we'll start speeding this up a little bit. <laughs> Now, actually, Leah found this, and she wanted it for her apartment, and I may let her borrow it when we do the styling, but I really wanted this because I thought it would be great for the great room. I think sometimes it's hard to find Halloween decorations that aren't kind of cheesy, and I think this is, has an understated Halloween-ness about it, and I really like it. It it will just require a pillow insert. I probably already have one. It looks to be maybe 15 by 15, I'm not really sure. But this will look color coordinated and I think look great in the back room, in the great room. And it will help me kind of bring a little bit of Halloween. And I will be showing you, once I get everything decked out for fall, we'll be doing a fall cottage tour inside and out, won't we, Stuart? There's a little tease. Okay, this is something that is on my must have. Every time I go, I look for these kinds of things, and that's any kind of glassware like Pyrex or something. I was talking about um, that all I have of these kind of casserole dishes, they are larger. They, they're great for cooking for a crowd, but not so much for just Hubs and myself when we are trying to exercise a little bit of portion control. So I got this. It was all of four cents. 79 um, and I like the fact that I am just repurposing something and this will be great and I also like the fact that it's kind of in this this caramel color so that came home with me hey guys Linda Botter here well Carrie just told me I was old so I am just trying to absorb that before I tell you about this quick Halloween tip, I love this. You can take one of those light up orange pumpkins that you get almost anywhere and you can transform them into something that's a little bit more classy, I think, just by spray painting them. This is kind of a gunmetal metallic spray paint, but I think it ends up looking really good, especially if you wanna use them inside. So that is my Halloween quick tip from this old lady to you use gunmetal spray paint to brighten up your orange pumpkins. Well, that was then, and this is now, and yes, now I am even older than I was when that clip was originally taken. Now, I really don't have an exact counterpart to that gunmetal Halloween pumpkin um, because it's not quite Halloween yet, 
But what I think I'll probably do is take that pumpkin and use it someplace indoors. And then when it gets to be jack-o'-lantern time, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do. It may be that I just put a jack-o'-lantern on this table. Um, I think I told you that I was going to put the witches on the upper bank and we'll try to put a picture of those witches for you. Um, and then I might just have a couple of select ones that are up near the porch. At this point, I'm not really sure. I'm still thinking, I'm still thinking through that. One thing I know for sure is I don't want a bunch of those plug-in pumpkins that require me to have ex a bunch of extension cords and things that go to the outlet. So we'll just have to wait and see how that all unfolds. Well, one thing I knew for sure when I moved to the cottage on the hill and started a new garden was that I was really going to have to rethink the scale, the size, and the shape of some of my plantings because I really needed to concentrate on certain kinds of plants that could fill small, narrow, tight spaces. And I think I've identified some brilliant solutions for those very problems. Starting out with this absolutely gorgeous diamond spire garden. Gardenia. What I love about it is that it's going to put, it's going to produce some really beautiful, fragrant, single white blooms late spring through fall if I keep them fertilized. Now I've grown these before in containers in really large pots, but this is the first time that I've grown them in a tight and narrow space. And this is going to just be a perfect plant for this location because it wants to grow in a part sun to a part shady disposition. This actually faces east, so it will get morning sun and afternoon shade, that most coveted of positions for any plant to grow. Now I also like it because I have placed it here and I was able to do so because of its small size. And as I sit in this bench or as I walk along the path and it's blooming, I am just going to adore the fragrance of those small gardenia flowers. Well, I'm especially excited about this small space solution because it's Roman Candle Podocarpus, something that I haven't grown before. It's gonna be beautiful in this tight corner, mostly because of its perfect scale. So it will get anywhere from 10 to 15 feet high, but that's gonna be over a pretty long period of time and about three to four feet wide. So it very much will form fit to this location. I also love it because as its name implies, it's got these white tufts that almost look like they're illuminated. And then it's got kind of a, almost a succulent Mediterranean feel. So I love it from that perspective, from a design perspective. It is pest resistant, deer resistant, heat tolerant, drought tolerant, so it really clicks all of those boxes. I think it's going to be brilliant in this location. I also like the fact that it's got kind of gray, blue-gray overtones, and as I said, it will be just a wonderful punctuation point for this narrow corner. Well, in contrast to the silvery green of the Roman candle podocarpus, this forever goldie arbor vita is just, it's almost flaming. It has this really brilliant gold foliage, which does two things. It's really tough, but it can also illuminate any space because it can handle full sun, but it might appreciate some shade in the afternoon. Just like the podocarpus, which likes full sun to part shade, these can both handle transitioning environments. They can also both be located either in the ground or they are both magnificent as container specimens for these really tight enclosed spaces. So Forever Goldie would be brilliant flanking either side of a doorway in an area where you don't want it to get too tall. This is going to top out at about 10 to 12 and a half feet I think. Most of these just like the Roman Candle is going to be oh about three and a half to four feet wide and to a certain extent that can be manageable. It's pest resistant. It is really going to give me four season interest evergreen and I think it, it can really do the job both stylistically and practically. 
Well, I like anything that resembles a boxwood, and the dense, upright growth of this Red Sky Ilex definitely does resemble a boxwood, which I adore because of its deep green and its glossy leaves. I also adore this because it's really going to flank my rain barrel beautifully. It is going to get, oh, I think maybe eight feet tall and about three to four feet wide, not unlike the other upright kind of conical forms of the Forever Goldie Arborvita and the Roman Candle Podocarpus. So definitely I'm into these shapes in my small garden. It can handle part sun to part shade, evergreen interest. But what I'm really looking forward to is the new growth, which will tip out in a reddish color and it will also provide blackberries in the winter time. So it's got multiple things to commend it, both in form and the fact that it can very, very beautifully encase and fill this small space. For all of these upright conical evergreen small space solutions, a couple of things to bear in mind. If you're doing them close to and or under the eave of a roof line, you just wanna make sure that once they reach their mature size that there's clearance to any overhang or roof line. Another thing you wanna take into consideration is whether or not there's enough clearance between whatever wall there is and the plant itself. Not only do you wanna make sure that there's enough room for the plant to grow, but you also want to minimize any kind of reflected heat from the surfaces that they may be growing close to. Also take into account what your growing zone is. All of these are appropriate to my zone seven garden, but definitely check what the limitations are if you're someone that gardens on the edge of any kind of climate zone. Okay, this is another fun find for Halloween. They had a whole section of, of seasonal decor stuff. Stuart, we might, at the end of the video, we need to put in a link to the one we shot last year where I deconstructed a wreath and ended up making a whole Thanksgiving tablescape out of it. So we might need to remember that. Um, but I just loved this little Halloween votive. I thought it was kind of just fun. Might be using this in the great room with one of my votives, with one of my votives. Okay, so this is going to go in the great room. Okay, I found this immediately and I just loved it. And in fact, this morning I went out and I cut a bunch of zinnias because this is going to be filled with zinnias next time you see it. And it's just a basic blue pottery vase and it will probably be styled over in this location. I will put, and we'll put a link below, um, a couple of felt protective glides on here on the bottom. This was all of $2, and I can make something really tall, really short, but whatever color zinnias I decide to style it with, and we will be showing you that. Um, I will kind of color coordinate it with that painting. Okay, a couple of, of, of just other things that I got were a play on some stuff that I already had. If you watched a video a while back, one of my little life luxuries was getting a bunch of different votive, primarily kind of a knobby hob, with a knobby hobnail exterior. Um, they were all in light blue and I got them as part of my September blue thing, just a little life luxury. Well, I found some other other things to add to that collection. And these, and you guys, you see this stuff a lot of different places. It's this, I'm calling it hobnail. You guys might call it something else. But this kind of textured finish, I've got some glassware that has this finish. Um, and, and I need some scissors. And you know what? I, I hate shrink wrap. I absolutely hate it because, well, I hate it for one thing because it's plastic, but I also hate it because it always tries to fight me, especially when I don't have scissors. But you can see the finish on that. And I think it'll be really fun to pair these. And look at how beautifully it matches my couch. Beautiful. So I could also put one of those uh, floral 
frogs in there. <clears throat> I've got a frog in my voice. Uh, put one of those floral frogs in here and have just a couple of tall singular blooms coming out of these, which I think would be very pretty too, in addition to coordinating with the other ones that I already had. All right, I gotta ask, why are they called frogs? Why are they called frogs? I have no idea. And if any of you guys know why they are called flower frogs, let me know. Um, and by the way, I used the, you guys were asking about the glass ones. Several of you commented, and I so appreciate this, that you find your glass flower frogs at antique stores, places like that, that might be on a permanent list to always be looking for. Um, and I never have enough for some reason. I've got one glass one, and I wanted some more clear ones. So I'll put a link below <coughs> to the flower frogs that I bought on online for some reason. You know, some people run out of milk. I run out of clear. <laughs> flower frogs okay this is kind of this is kind of along that that <clears throat> same theme but <clears throat> here's something that I realized and a tip that I should remember every time I go thrifting and that is to bring my own packaging with me you know some of my my already used plastic bags, things like that so my glass my glass items aren't just clanking around yeah. in in my own bag that I bring, but I don't always bring the packaging, so I need to remember that. Okay, I love these. They've got this very nature-inspired pine, pine cone motif on the front. Now, I imagine using these in a number of different ways, but I think these are really, really fun. And I found, I bought as many as they had um, I think there, I think there were four of them. So I could use these as cocktail glasses. I could use them for votives. I could use them as juice glasses. I, I could use them as mini vases. I could use them in just a number of different, number of different ways. You know what? This would be cute on a platter where I could put all different kinds of nuts and little snacks in them. You're always into my nuts and snacks when you come over. So there's just a million different things that I could use these for. These were all of 99 cents for one. So for all of them, the entire Christmas set. Are they all the same? Uh, yes, they're all the same. 99 cents. You could float stuff. I could float I, I could float stuff in here and I'm trying to think about if I have kind of a blue Christmas motif what I could do so please you guys as always comment below with any ideas that you have for me something that I am not thinking about that would be a good idea Ooh, you know I could put Christmas candies in here but in all like white um, what are those those candied almonds um, oh, uh what are they called? About. Yeah. Anyhow, those. You guys will come up with the word for me. Uh, I, I bet but candy corn could still go. Candy corn could still go. <laughs> but I'm thinking. I'm thinking know, more Christmas. Know, you. Know. You and Leah have. I, I, have I can't believe I don't have any candy corn for you yet. <laughs> that I don't have candy corn for you yet. Okay. So I, I found four of these, and I think these will be very, very fun, and I can use them in just myriad ways for for the holidays. Um, and I think those, I think those are fun. Now, some house steward, and she's probably panicking because this was, I think, Leah's favorite find. Was, yes, this, I, and I can't, I can't communicate just how delicate this little vase is, but I, I do believe we heard her squeal when she found this. <laughs> for $1.99, and we'd no sooner gotten home with our respective boxes than she, than she was doing an emergency message to both of us. <laughs> did my sweet little vase get in Linda's box by accident? Yes, it did, Leah, but I promise you I will protect it until we can get it to your house and, and style your apartment. Um, uh, you may recall that I had a great big kind of an olive green. Do you remember the great big olive green vase slash jug? Yeah. You may or may not remember it. Okay, well, I can't show it to you because I've got it in the dishwasher. And I am going to be styling some flowers in it that you see probably by my kitchen sink. So it is out of commission for right now. But oh my, yes, I did bring it home. And it will, it will fit in so many different places. Now here... 
Glassware being one of the things that we always look for and, and always strike some scores. Okay, so I seldom can pass up anything that has my initial on them. <laughs> so these both have L's on them. So I can use these in different places. I think the, I might actually use these in my bathroom uh, with, you know, with some of the same ideas. Some of the same ideas that I use uh, for the other ones. I might put some bath salts in these with a fun little scoop or something in my bathroom because I think they would just be elegant. But I also might use them to make an old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> and drink and drink an old fashioned out of that because it's almost old fashioned season. Okay, so that I think pretty much wraps up the things I came home with, with the exception of one more thing. It, do you remember? I, we we got so much stuff, Stuart, that I I would I well, wouldn't I be surprised if you don't remember. There was my, one more thing that I thought I just. It, that I just had to have come home with me. Okay, you know what, let's take a break here because <laughs> I want to see if any of you guys remember what uh, really kind of jettisoned me back to my childhood. It's a very fun, childlike Christmas thing. See if you remember before oh, we come back after, before yeah. we come back after the break. Well, I knew two things for sure when I started to design this outdoor living room in the back. I wanted to use lots of brick and I wanted to use plants that had a real low growing, mounded, rounded form. And so I'm just doing what I did at the other house and I am relying heavily on some of my favorites, starting with, I, I it's, absolutely adorable, both in name and in stature, and that is Pancake Arborvita. It's got kind of a sagey green, turns a little bit more bluish in the winter time. It's gonna stay low, having that small rounded form that I so like. I like to keep it a little bit tightly pruned, though you don't have to. It's gonna grow about 12 to 18 inches high and about two to three feet wide. It can even, it can top Right, sandy soil, um, it can handle full sun to part shade. And what I love is it just, it just will be so sweet, I think, and so cozy for me to be sitting out here on the patio and then be surrounded by these little rounded, mounded forms like uh, Pancake Arborvita. Now, I not only want to be surrounded by that form, but I also want to be surrounded with scents of the fall season. And to me, that means rosemary. Got lots of rosemary chicken um, in my my daydreams. So I've planted, <laughs> I've planted some chef's choice rosemary. It too will kind of have that low growing mounded form if I decide to clip it. It can grow in kind of tight spaces, but I just love the fact that its fragrance, especially if I decide to toss it on a little pinion fire or on my grill, will really give me a cozy fall vibe. This one is hardy in my zone, and I, what I am going to do with all of these plantings is make sure I mulch them really well in case it gets we get a, a really deep dive in the temperatures. Um, I'm also using using some Dragon Prince Cryptomeria. I think it is gonna have that same profi profile that I love so much. And the advantage to all of these is that they are evergreen. They will stay kind of tight and compact and I can use them in the ground or I can use them in pots. Now, these are evergreen, but I've also got some more fluffy kind of mounded plants that I rely on. Well, you can't get a fall cozy vibe with evergreen plantings alone. I think you need a counterpoint to that with something that is soft and textural. Okay, yes, caressable. <laughs> so, so how about soft caress Mahonia? This is an award-winning plant for so many different reasons. I'm going to use it, I think, predominantly because it really, it can handle areas that are a little bit difficult to work with. This is a very shady area. I wanted something that would, a shrub that would give me some ground cover qualities, but that also would give me the beauty and I think um, 
some of the other assets of small shrubs. So I'm going to fill this entire area with soft caress. Now it will bloom in early winter with yellow blooms, but in the fall what it's going to do is these cooler temperatures will make it produce these tiny new little fronds that almost have kind of a ferny woodland quality to me, which is very, very autumnal and very cozy. I love the way it looks here and I will love it even more when I add additional ones that kind of spill over the brick. It is pest resistant. It's drought tolerant once you get it established. And it mostly, it's just really, really good looking. It's not going to get overgrown in this location and it's gonna be virtually maintenance free. So for um, a, that kind of cozy vibe that I want, I'm also going to add this beautiful soft caress mahonia. Well, one of the very first plants that I installed in the cottage garden was Miss Lemon Abelia because I absolutely adore it. It's going to get about three feet tall, four feet wide, but I wanted to incorporate it in this area here that I call Lemon Lane, and I've planted it with Lemon Lime Nandina, but I just think it looks so romantic and so frilly, and I, I've always thought of it as something that would just be so, so beautiful in the spring garden. But now that it's fall, I realize that it has that kind of, of fallish, cozy vibe that I also love. And that is for a number of different reasons. I love the way its variegated glossy foliage really captures the low angle of the sun. I think it's, it's beautiful. It just glows in the landscape. But look at these sweet flowers. They are just adorable and they attract pollinators. They attract those monarchs. And, and you know, in addition to the fact that it's beautiful, it is just so easy care. There, it requires, well, it, it requires practically nothing other than full sun to part shade. It's drought tolerant once it gets established. It's pest resistant. I mean, what's not to love about it? It's both beautiful, it's easy care, and I think it is eminently cozy in the spring or in the fall. Well, there are just some of the plants that are on my fall cozy list. You guys might want to try them out yourself. Just make sure that they're appropriate to your zone and to the growing exposure where you intend to plant them, whether that's in containers or in the ground. They're really all easy care. They're beautiful in the garden and really they expect and demand very little of you. So break out the pumpkin spice and create your own fall cozy garden. Hey guys, a couple of things I wanted to tell you about today. One, to answer a question, many questions that I get from a lot of you, and that's do I bring in all of these little topiaries in the winter time? And yes, I do. These larger boxwood ones stay outside, but the smaller myrtles and some of the uh, ones that aren't frost tender, those will come inside and I'll protect them. Before I do though, I'm gonna spray them with an insecticidal soap. I don't know if it's all the rain we've had this year, I, I really don't know what the cause is, but I've never seen white fly quite as bad in Oklahoma City as I've seen it this year. So I'm going to make sure right now and right before I bring them inside that I pretty repeatedly spray them with some kind of insect, insecticidal soap. This one actually was Nature's Care, and then I made my own brew to refill it. Um, this one is... A Captain uh, Dr. Earth, excuse me, Dr. Earth Pure and Natural. They're both organic, um, and it really doesn't. Well, that was then, and this is now. I still do not bring in any of my large boxwood topiary. All of these on the front porch and in front of the living room or the parlor windows, I should say. These will all stay outside because they're frost hardy. I've got a few things in the back that I'll, I'll bring in. Um, sadly, my inventory of topiary is much smaller. Myrtle topiary is much smaller than it was because a lot of them bit the dust in the process of our moving. And until I get settled, I'm really not going to do too much to increase their numbers. But those that I do have that will be brought inside and these mammoth and exquisitely beautiful, I think, Eugenia topiaries, these are not frost hardy and these I will have to bring inside. And yes, I will treat these with an insecticidal soap before they go into the greenhouse because I don't in any way want to infest the greenhouse 
with any hitchhikers. Okay, and the award for the most fun, most whimsical, most uh, evocative of childhood <laughs> find that we found was da -da 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 -da, sure the Santa Bowl. <laughs> now, Stuart, what did you just say? It'd be great to be upside down in the snow. Like, yeah, up. like this with your, feet, with your feet stinging up like something, maybe by the fireplace yeah. or something. But I just thought this was so cute and I can already see it. First of all, I could see it styled with a fabulous bouquet. I mean, I, I could definitely make kind of an elegant bouquet with this. But I am probably instead going to make uh, for the Christmas tour, a candy bouquet. And I think I'm gonna fill it with lots of fun peppermint sticks and those great big, what are the round suckers called? Um, anyhow, a, a Christmas candy bouquet. And I think Ooh. that will be so, so fun, don't you? It needs to be a video. Um, I just have to make sure that it's maybe candies that I don't like, so I'm not <laughs> I'm not tempted to ruin the bouquet. But I think this will be fun to have just, you know, in addition to all of the other high style, kind of elegant um, Christmas decor, you got to have something that speaks to your inner child. Please. So yeah, something playful. Thank you, Stuart. Sometimes I can't come up with the right word. So I think that'll be fun. Please, please, please. I really need your help now. There are people who actually make candy bouquets for a living. <laughs> you guys have probably done them yourself. I think my, my sister-in-law, Lee, used to make stuff kind of stuff like that and if you know if you can think of any kind of candies and particularly the sources for those kind of candies really fun candy canes large candy canes uh, different colored candy canes if you have any kind of candy recommendations candy sources I need your help um, so please send me that information and the links well you know Leah found some great stuff I found some great stuff. More importantly, we had so much fun. It is just criminal that we make a living doing this kind of thing, Stuart. All of the stuff that we brought home, all of my stuff, all of Leah's uh, granny chic decor, all of that stuff, I think Stuart found a frame, mm -hmm. everything came in at, you guys checked out, and you told me it was around $90 or something? About 100 about a hundred. Okay. All of that we got for about a hundred dollars. Now, where else could you get this kind of quality stuff for under a hundred dollars, which is why we thrift. And let me tell you, yesterday there were so, there were so many stylish young people oh, and yeah, oh my gosh, there were so many stylistas in there yeah. yesterday. Um, that I felt pressure as soon as we walked in. I felt boutique because of that. Like, yeah, I felt very <laughs> boutique. -y. Um, and we felt pressure as soon as we walked in to get to it because we wanted to make sure we found some of our finds. There was a blue and white dress there that a young darling gal had that I wanted to snatch right out of her hands like you know a, a sale at Lord and Taylor's or something um, so it was it was so so much fun now what was equally as fun when we finished with our thrifting adventure I came home to host a group of students of biology students from Heritage Hall thank you Morgan for bringing them um, it was kind of a small group because uh, you know the cottage can only handle so much at a time to talk about seeds and adult secrets of adulthood <laughs> and life lessons and and just mostly I think the the b biggest gift of all was whenever I get down and feel bad about the future all I have to remember are great kids like these so thank you Xavier Roman Maddie Kingston and Morgan Thank you for coming out and hanging out with me for the afternoon. It was so much fun. I know I learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot too. 
like I say, very, it makes me feel good about the future knowing that there's these kind of really good kids coming up. Um, Stuart, what have we forgotten? I don't, think I don't know. Please make sure to subscribe, follow us, share this content with others. And as always, if there's anyone that is hurting or needs our help, let's keep them front and center in, in all of our heads to help them out. So, oh, and, and very specifically, it's just about regional bank, regional food bank time. Um, so that is something that I really start paying attention to in the lead up to Thanksgiving. So that's, that's one of my favorite kind of causes to, um, well, well, to just to give back because I have gotten so much from you and others. You guys have a great Sunday.